Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. This is our regular Saturday service, and we are God's Remnant at God's Church of Love online. And Marlene is getting ready to bring a word right now. God bless you as you hear. Amen, Marlene. Okay, amen. The title of this is Blessed Are Those That Prepare for the Last Days. Mm. Okay, Revelation 1 and 3. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the word of prophecy. And blessed are those who hear it and take heart to what is written in it because the time is near. Luke 21 and 36. Be always on watch and pray that you may be able to escape all these things that are going to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. And surely we are living in the last days. Because you can see the signs are everywhere. You can see the signs are everywhere. Men's hearts are growing cold. Men yeah. and women are killing one another. Yeah. It's as if they don't care. They're, they'll take a picture of a dead body and put it on Facebook and put it on YouTube, but they won't reach out and help their fellow brothers and sisters. It's just so obvious of, you know, the times that we're living in. The natural disasters, you see the earthquakes, you see the hurricanes, you see the, the uh, floods, and you see it it's just everywhere. And it's so obvious and it's just so imperative that we prepare ourselves for these yes. last days because we can see that wisdom has fled and uh, we look to entertainers right. and we don't look to the Lord and we find ourselves looking to entertainers instead of looking to the Lord for the answer. Mm. And the only way to prepare is to turn from sin and don't let the devil distract you and keep you focused on everything but what is important. And sometimes we, we find ourselves looking at our goals and letting our goals be our, uh, and, and focusing too much on our goals instead of saying we want to focus on the Lord. Yeah. And um, one of the most effective tools that the enemy used is distractions. And it leads you uh, away, it leads you from God and into sin. It's like when you don't have a prayer life. The enemy wants to keep your focus off the Lord. We'll find ourselves doing, like going to the gym and, and making all these goals and saying to ourselves that I want to make $100,000 a year and I want a promotion. Yeah. But the enemy will do anything that he can to keep your focus off of the Lord. Right. Because when he keeps you in distraction, one of the most effective tools that the enemy uses is distraction to lead you away from God. Right. Because he won't want you to have a prayer life. Mm -hmm. The importance of a prayer life, remember when you first met someone that you fell in love with? Uh -huh. What did you do? You got on the phone and you talked to that person, you talked to them, and you communicated and you dialogued with that person. Well, it's the same way with Jesus. When you meet Jesus and you want to know him, you have got to have a prayer life. You have got to speak with him and and, and come and fellowship with him. And it's the same way. So right. with distraction, the enemy uses this so that there's no prayer life because there's power when there's communication with Jesus. Right. There's power when there's a prayer life. When there's no reading of the word of God because the, the enemy has you focused on your goals and your way. But the Lord... The Lord wants you to uh, to focus on His will and His way. So when you don't read your word, you don't get instruction. You don't get the word. You don't get convicted because there's wisdom in the word. Right. There's conviction in the word. There's power in reading the word of God. And so what the enemy does is that he uses all of this distraction to keep your focus. As long as he can keep you on what, what you think is important, and keep you away from a prayer life and keep you away from reading the word of God, the enemy has succeeded because he wants you to stay in sin. Mm -hmm. And the only way that you can come out of sin is if you come into the Lord and say, Lord, I, I don't want to do this anymore, even to recognize it because uh, we're supposed to love people and use money, but people use people and love money mm -hmm. and the world has gotten into a, a, a place where it's just people have become money hungry and people have become uh, uh the love of money have turned the hearts of men cold yep and they work their whole lives to uh to save money to put money in the bank and, and what happens is that you wind up leaving the money 
you can't bring it with you. You can't bring your worldly accomplishments with you. You can't bring anything with you. The only thing that you can bring with you is when there's power, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. That's where your power is because we, what we're all trying to do is we're trying to make it to the heavenly kingdom. We're trying to overcome this world and overcome this flesh. But we have to understand what the world is and how to be separated from it and the value of the uh, of eternal what eternal values are. What we want to do is we want to be Holy Spirit filled. Right. So when you're Holy Spirit filled, you have the fruit. The first fruit is love because there's power in love. Love covers a multitude of sins. And there's power, and that love is not going to change. There's love, which is the fruit of the Spirit. There's joy. There's peace. There's patience. There's kindness. There's goodness. There's faith. There's gentleness. And there's self-control. And these are the things that we should value. These are eternal values that we should have and that we should crave and that we should hunger for. That's right. But a lot of times we look at... uh, this, this goal that we have set, we'll, we'll look at, oh, we have so much on our plate. And the enemy says, yes, keep all that stuff on your plate because I keep you in sin. As long as you're in sin, you're in bondage and you're in a threat to my kingdom. Mm-hmm. But these are the last days. And this is the time where we need to be preparing ourselves and preparing our lives. And the only way to prepare your heart is through uh, turning from sin. And as long as the enemy has you in distraction and focus on your role and everything but he doesn't he has you. Right. And um the enemy wants you focused on the things that you can't change. He wants you on he wants you focusing on past heart. Yes. He wants you in generational curses. Mm-hmm. But you can break the curse of your generational curses of addiction with, with alcoholism. You can break the curses of pornography of generational yes. curses yes. that uh, that has been when you come into the Lord. Mm-hmm. But the enemy doesn't want you to understand to even know. So uh, it's so imperative for us to prepare and to realize and to recognize that we have to turn to Jesus to ask for his forgiveness and mm-hmm. healing. And we have to trust that he will lead us down the path of righteousness. The last days are here. The last days are in front of us. I have never seen people so cold. I have never seen a time where we don't call each other. People right. don't knock on the doors and come visit one another. If you don't, uh, people text and don't even call each other. It's just the hearts of men have just grown so cold. Right. So it's important for us to turn to Jesus and ask Jesus. Say, Lord, I want I want you to forgive me. I understand and I know that I have been in sin. Lord, I know generational curses are on us. Lord, I was born in sin. When I was born from my mother's womb, I was born to feel hate and unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. But through your blood, Lord Jesus, you have redeemed me, and I want to be redeemed. And I don't want this burden of sin. And I don't want to feel the wrath of an angry God that's coming to judge the earth. And that's why we have got to get our spiritual house in order. Right. And um, the enemy wants... Don't let him blind your eyes because that's what he wants to do. He wants to blind your eyes so that your heart will be hardened and you won't be honest with yourself to say, um, I have this lust addiction. I have this, this bondage of I cry myself to sleep every night because I'm so afraid and I'm so lonely and I'm so filled with uh, so much loneliness and, wow. and lust and bondage and, and addiction and All these things that we suffer with. But the Lord is there to say, awaken. I'm here to heal. My blood is here to purify you. My blood is here to forgive. There's healing. There's so much when we turn to Jesus. Because Jesus is the answer. We're living in a world that has fallen, that was fallen. Satan has power and control over this world. Mm -hmm. We're living in a fallen world. We're living in a broken world. And we're living in the last days. Right. And I think people realize and understand how close we are to the end because every, when everything is normal and it seems I think it's a, something called norm, normality, normality bias, where we, we've just gotten so off, uh, comfortable with things being normal. But the end is here. 
and it's time for us to get our spiritual houses in order. It's time for us to, to uh, prepare, and the only way to prepare is to get your spiritual house in order. You can't buy enough gun to prepare for the wrath of an angry God. You can't go and to build bunkers down in the um, down in the earth. That's what they're doing. They're building these bunkers and these uh, little uh, uh, prepping and building bunkers. You, you can't. There are going to be scorpions. They're going to be um, hailstones, 100 pounds. They're going to be horses with the face of humans, with long hair, with the body of horses that's going to sting you to have the sting of a scorpion. They're going to be 100 pound hail that's going to come upon the earth. Right. This you can't do. One thing you can't do is that you can you do not have the firepower to fight against God. That's right. The only way that you can prepare is through, through turning away from sin. It's through coming to Jesus and saying, Lord, I'm a sinner. Being honest with yourself and saying, Lord, I need you because the last days are here. Yes. And I just don't think that people sound the alarm enough. I just don't think that people realize and understand how close we are. Because uh, a lot of times we'll hear everything is okay and we serve a loving God and we do serve a loving God. But we serve a God of holiness and a God of wrath. And we serve a, a, a God that wants you to live holy and wants you to walk in obedience. That's right. And wants you to have intimacy with Him through prayer, through reading His Word. And that's how you get intimacy with the Lord. And you got to recognize and say, I recognize and understand that the world is what it is and it's wicked and it's sin and lord i want to be a part of your will right. and lord i want to be loved by you i want to be protected by you the fruits of the spirit which are love joy peace patience kindness goodness faith and gentleness and self-control that those are blessings the, that is power yes and i don't think people understand we don't understand the power that it is when you turn to the Lord and, and you say, Lord, I want to live for you. And I turn away from this uh, deception of the enemy where the enemy wants you in goals and the enemy wants you in competitions and he wants you focused on vanity and everything but what truly matters. Right. Turning away from sin and that's saying, Lord, I repent. Repent means to turn away. Right. Turn away from sin. Lord, I repent. Lord, I ask you to to forgive me, Lord, this is power, and the grace is still here. Mm -hmm. So we still have the chance to say, Lord, forgive me, Lord, help me, Lord, I'm sorry, Lord, I'm broken, Lord, I need you, because the last days are upon us. Yes. And what is coming upon the earth, I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. And that's how bad it's mm -hmm. going to be. War, famine, just death by the sword, death by famine. It's, it's just going to be demons being unleashed upon the earth. It's going to be the sun is going to black out. The moon is going to not give its light. It's going to be complete and total darkness. And that's why I just think it's so important that we understand. It's so important that we sometimes we have to evaluate and look at our lives and say, is this really worth me losing my soul for? Is this relationship that I'm in that I know the Lord is calling me out of? Is this worth my soul? being left on this earth and the judgment of God being poured upon us or do we want to come to the arms of a loving Christ a loving Lord that wants to forgive us that wants us to have the fruit of love and joy and all those blessings that comes because the world has gotten us to a point where we're just comfortable with um the, the accomplishments of man. Right. The world has gotten us to a point where we're just so comfortable with our accomplishments and we look at these cars and say, hey, I've gotten a new car, I'm blessed. Hey, I've gotten a new house, I'm blessed. Hey, I've gotten this. But you don't know Jesus. Right. And you're in addiction, you're in lust, you're in, in pornography, you're in, in drug addiction, you're in substance abuse and different things that we're struggling with. But people have these hidden sins. And, and they look at these things and they say, because they see this materialistic, these material things manifested. But no, the, the blessings are when you're able to say, Lord Jesus, I'm, I'm taking part of your grace right now. Lord Jesus, mm. I want you to be a part of my life and I turn from sin. Yes. I'm not letting somebody have me 
of then an addiction um, control in my life. Right. Because you will never get to the root of the problem if you don't address it. Whatever's going on in your life, you will never get to the root of the problem if you don't address sin. And sin is the core of everything. It's the core of your weeping. It's the core of sicknesses, even infirmities. There's a demon of cancer. There's a demon. There's a demon. There's a yes. demon in your life. Yes. Sin is that powerful. And people don't realize how powerful sin is and how wonderful and glorious the power of forgiveness and true repentance is. Mm -hmm. And how wonderful and glorious it is to still be able to say, Lord, I recognize this and I come to you. I humble myself and I lay myself at your feet. Lord, I, I give it to you because my mother struggled with it. Because there's generational, you remember that book, The Picks in the Power? Yes. That book, there's generational curses of demonic curses that are handed down from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. So these generational curses, people say, that uh, like drug addiction, uh, alcoholism, there's generational curses, a perpetuating cycle of curses handed down from generation to generation. And the core root of it is demonic control over these generations and people. Mm -hmm. and the way that we get prepared for these last days is to get our spiritual health in order. That's because right. That time is near. And it's here, and somebody needs to sound the alarm. And I just don't think that people realize it and see it because um, the enemy can blind us. The enemy blinds us. So thank you guys. Wow. I hope this has touched someone. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Marlene. I knew it. I knew you had that word in you. That was a word from God. And you don't know it, but the scripture God gave me last night is right in line with that message. The last days and the judgment that's coming. Wow.